here's an image that I photographed of Rainbow Beach up on the Sunshine Coast of Queensland, Australia, quite a few years ago. It was shot on a 20D, a Canon 20D. Now, the reason I'm using this photo is I want to demonstrate how you can implement HDR toning on a single uh, exposure photograph such as this one. Now, it's not a terribly great shot, and it was taken just before dawn, um, but we're going to see if we can improve it using this new feature in Photoshop. Now, in order to use HDR toning, we need to first actually flatten our images. So we need to only have one layer, and it needs to be completely flattened. Uh, in order to do that, if you do have multiple layers, you just go up to Layer, and you go down the bottom to Flatten Image. And in this case, it's already flattened, so I don't need to actually go about and do that. So if we go to Image and then go to Adjustments, you'll find HDR toning just underneath Shadow and Highlights. So we click on that and that'll bring up the HD toning window. Now HDR, or the HDR toning window. Now HDR toning lets you apply a full range of HDR contrast and exposure settings to your individual images. Now if you don't know what HDR stands for, it simply stands for High Dynamic Range Imagery. And that's where you take multiple exposures um, at different uh, exposure settings and then combine them into one photograph. So in some cases where you have a really high dynamic range um, uh, scene that you're shooting where you've got really extreme highlights and really extreme shadows where you've got a very high uh, contrast ratio by photographing and exposing correctly for the shadows and then exposing the midtones and exposing correctly for the highlights you can combine all those exposures in order to get a high dynamic range image that can look quite quite amazing when you actually piece it all together. Now in most cases, high dynamic range imagery, um, you're, ending, you're either shooting around three frames or five frames, sort of in that vicinity in order to uh, create a high dynamic range image. And you can, use, you can actually create them within Photoshop itself. It, there is a, um, a um, HDR feature for combining all those different exposures, which we'll go into later. Um, but in this video, we're just going to look at how to improve a single image and add that sort of HDR um, look to it by using the HDR toning window. Now the first thing you're going to notice when you open up HDR toning is that you have a set of presets just like most of the other adjustments that you'll find in Photoshop that just give you uh, a range of default settings here that you can sort of um, uh, apply to your images and they'll automatically implement um, all the different values uh, that are required in order to sort of uh, generate that effect basically. Um, so you can have a play around with just jumping through these different um, these different presets to see if there are any in particular that you like and some of them are, are really extreme and some of them are quite sort of um, simplistic and, and minimal with their adjustments. But to start off with we're just going to leave it on default and we're just going to use the default settings to begin with. Now You'll notice that we have method here and another drop down menu. If we click on that, you have four different options that you can use in order to edit or apply HDR toning to your image. You can start with exposure and gamma. Now this only has two options for you and that is basically an exposure setting similar to that that you'll find in Camera Raw and Photoshop. And you also have a gamma setting. So gamma is basically um, what happens with a linear uh, raw file from your digital camera is that it actually applies a gamma curve to that raw file in order to um, take it from linear in order uh, and basically convert it over to a non-linear um, format from which we we can actually edit and then view. If if you viewed it in linear, it would be a very dark file. Um, so essentially you can play around with adjusting the exposure settings here and obviously they're quite extreme um, so in uh, you know if you have an extreme photograph that has you know blown out highlights or really dark shadows this can be quite useful um, but you just want to be really careful with the amounts that you're actually applying and gamma is is very handy as well you know you can increase the contrast just by moving the slider uh, to the left or you can reduce the contrast in your photograph as I'm doing there so you can end up with some very interesting um, results and especially at this time of uh, morning where it was um, 
The photograph that I took here was just a quick happy snap and it is slightly uh, underexposed but it is a raw file so um, well the original file is a raw file except in this case I've just I haven't really done anything to it I've just opened it up um, just straight into Photoshop and we just started working on the default um, the default settings of the camera now along with the exposure and gamma we also have highlight compression and equalize uh, histogram. Now both of these actually don't have any options um, as stated here. There are no options for this HDR toning method. Um, so they'll simply apply their own adjustment to your image uh, but you won't actually be able to do anything with it. So most of the time you're not really going to utilize these two um, unless under particular certain circumstances. But the main method that you, you're primarily going to be using for HDR toning is the local adaption method. Now this is going to give you the most functionality and the, the most um, options in order for adjusting your, your images. So essentially you have four different areas of local adaption. You have the edge glow, the tone and detail, color, and toning curve and histogram. Now each of these settings come with their own set of sliders. So with edge glow, we actually have the radius and strength, and this simply emphasizes a glowing effect around the edges of contrast in your image. So if we increase the radius, you can go all the way up to 500, and then you can actually increase the strength of the actual edge glow if you want to. And in this case, you'll notice just over here on the right hand side around the highlights, uh, just above the clouds where the sun's coming up, that that's sort of um, been emphasized and it's standing out a lot more, and in some cases slightly blowing out, as you can see there. So edge glow, I don't really use that much. I, I tend to just leave it set at its sort of default settings, which seem to be um, relatively good around 16 pixels as a radius value and around 0.23 of a strength value seem to be quite good for um, the photographs that I've been particularly working on. Now underneath edge glow we have tone and detail. Now just as we looked at before you have a gamma slider, an exposure slider, a detail slider, a shadow and a highlight slider. Now We've seen how the gamma and exposure sort of work. With uh, the detail slider, that simply is going to sort of increase the detail in your photograph so it becomes quite evident. So the more you increase it, you'll start to see, let me just turn preview back on, you'll actually start to see uh, a quite a significant difference in the detail in your photograph. And this at the moment looks extremely grainy and way overdone, but as we bring it back, you, you can see that just adding, you know, around 30 or 40 percent, you can actually just increase sort of the clarity of the image as I turn off the preview uh, on and off. Now, underneath the detail, we have shadow and highlights, and this is could be uh, thought of as very similar to the shadow and highlight um, adjustment in Photoshop except it gives you a percentage where it will actually allow you to adjust the luminance values of the shadow region so I can sort of lighten off the shadow areas here if I want to but going a little bit too far you can notice you start to see some uh, issues regarding the um, sort of the reflections in the water here as opposed to the actual shadows of the sand so you want to be very careful with the adjustments that you make with um, the shadows and highlights and as you can see here I can start to actually pull down my highlights or increase them in value so that can be very useful especially in some cases where you have a photograph where the highlights are quite um, blown out and you just want to sort of knock them back a bit so they look a little bit more respectable in your photographs now underneath the tone and detail section we have color and these simply provide vibrance and saturation settings identical to which is found in Camera Raw. Um, so, you know, usually I'll apply saturation because that's going to apply um, saturation to all of the colors, whereas vibrance doesn't apply it to all the colors, especially sort of skin tones, um, unless, of course, I'm working with portraits. And then underneath that, we have the toning curve and histogram, and this is really useful when you're working with the HDR toning for sort of pulling in areas. So let's now go ahead and see if I can get a better result for this photograph. So what I'm going to first do is just knock these back to their default settings here. Now I'm going to leave edge glow set to where it's at 
I'm gonna make an adjustment to the gamma. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually sort of increase it just ever so slightly to maybe about two. And then I'm gonna actually pull back the um, exposure value. Just so I pull in those highlights just over here. Then what I'm gonna do um, is I'm actually going to grab the uh, toning curve and I'm going to actually just increase the um, overall mid-tone point so I start to lighten off the entire image. Now I'm doing this for several reasons. The first being I've increased the gamma in order to increase the contrast in this photograph. Because when I lighten off the um, shadows, if I was to just lighten them off basically using this shadow percentage here, they don't look as contrasty as I'd like them to be. They, they, they come a little bit washed out. So what I'm just doing is just uh, basically lightening off the mid-tone point using the tone curve and then slightly increasing the actual value of the uh, the gamma point which now it's at 2.5 um, and I'm just pulling back the highlights using the exposure slider just ever so slightly and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull in the actual um, highlights using the highlight slider to about 8 or 10 percent and then we can start to sort of adjust slightly higher with the actual curve setting here to get a value that I'm sort of relatively going to be happy with. So in this case I'm going to leave it set to about there. Now obviously I could uh, choose to actually increase the contrast and, and play around with the shadows and highlights here but I'm just going to keep it very simple in this particular example. Now what I can also do is lighten off the actual um, shadow areas using the, the shadow feature here and I don't want to go too far and I'm also going to just slightly reduce the amount of detail that's been applied to this image and as you can see just by making a couple of these um, adjustments you're really starting to get a relatively nice result although I just want to play around with the highlight value here just to get it to a to an area where I'm relatively happy with now that's just doing sort of a visual correction I can also um, start to actually add a couple of additional points to my curve where I can actually start to make a few slight adjustments to specifically the highlight areas as as I'm playing around here and I think in I think I'm relatively happy with what I've got there. I haven't done too much to it. But having said that, the results I think are, are relatively pleasing. So if I just move the HDR toning window across here, what we'll see is as I turn the uh, preview on and off, you'll notice I've gone from what is a relatively underexposed um, photograph to something that is now uh, relatively pleasing to the eye and doesn't look terribly bad. It does have some nice color in it and what I can also do is increase the saturation just slightly. And that essentially what you're doing here is just trying to mimic the um, the type of look that you can end up with when creating a HDR photograph using multiple exposures and I'm relatively happy with the result that I've got using uh, this particular example.